The day is finally here. This has been one of the most hotly requested bikes for me to review. This is the review of the State 4130 Coraline. What's up? I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous. And subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. And of course, you can check out the State Core Line 4130, that is, at the link in the description at any point during this video. So firstly, let's talk about specs. What exactly are you getting for your 460 US dollars? The frame set is made out of double-butted 4130 chromoly, which is about on par and what you would expect to get for a bike at this price. It does have some nice touches like a single set of bottle bosses on the down tube and chain tensioners that actually work. Chain tensioners are particularly nice if you're a beginner and you don't exactly have the feel for how you should tension your chain, so they let you dial it in. States come a long way, and the box section rims are actually a huge improvement over their 44 millimeter deep dish wheels. Unlike a lot of other bikes at this price, I feel that this wheel set is actually good enough for daily use, and I don't think that you need to upgrade it out of the box, assuming that you can true it on a regular basis. The 30 two spokes laced to sealed bearing Novatec hubs. Novatec hubs are some of the most consistent hubs that you can get for the money. With a lot of entry level bikes, it's a good idea to upgrade to something like a 200 to 250 dollar wheel set down the line, but with these, I think that you would get a pretty marginal upgrade. Since the hubs are really buttery smooth and they're sealed so they're not going to need to be maintained, and the rims are light enough. What is a bit peculiar about the 4130 Coraline though is that only some colors have the option to choose between the D dish wheels and the box section wheels. And always, I would go for the box section wheels. Those deep dish wheels are just heavier for no reason other than looks. As far as the components go, they're pretty generic, basic, but functional. Something to note is that it does come with a 144 BCD crank set, which is slightly better than the competition, but the finish on it, it looks like they may have cut some corners and that the front side has this nice, smooth, consistent finish, but once you turn around to the back, it just looks like that. And like most of the competition, the pedals on this thing just suck and you should upgrade them pretty much immediately. The 59 centimeter 4130 core line that I have here with risers, no brakes, and well go pedals weighs in at 20.5 pounds, which again is on par with the competition. Next up, let's talk about the ride quality. First, sprinting and accelerating. Because it is a steel frame set, it does flex a little bit when sprinting and accelerating, but it flexes in a way that feels natural natural and nicely balances springiness and stiffness. The cranks are stiff enough and they are actually noticeably stiffer than those generic 130 BCD cranks that come on a lot of other bikes. I originally thought that State's 144 BCD cranks were about the same as those generic cranks. I found out that the problem was just the pedals, but once I swapped the pedals over to my set of pedals, it really did liven up the ride quality of the bike. So if you want to enjoy this bike, I really do recommend that you upgrade the pedals. Fortunately, State does offer the option to upgrade your pedals during checkout, but unfortunately they don't have very many pedal options and they don't even have a good option for toe clips and straps, which is what most people would want. As for cornering, most of the steering is done with the pretty responsive feeling front end, meaning on this bike I found myself not leaning as much in the corners as I did flicking the bike around the corners. And because it takes corners more upright, I did not notice any pedal strike, even with extra large toe clips. It has pretty zippy handling and it's really easy to steer out of the way of potholes or roadkill at the last second. As for comfort, fit is the most important thing, but the sizing on the core line is a bit unconventional. The sizes are 46 centimeter, 49, 52, 55, 59, and 62. I'm usually a 57 or 58, so I had to go up a size to a 59. It works, but it's not ideal. And because the sizing is weird, you might not be able to dial in your fit perfectly, which is a little bit unfortunate. The double bedded 4130 chromo frame set is pretty comfortable comfortable though, and it does absorb a lot of the road buzz and bumps. It's even pretty comfortable with the stock 23C tires. And in the event that you want plumper tires, it can comfortably fit up to 32C tires. Here we have pictured 
28C Gator skins, which actually run on the wider side with plenty of room to spare. On the core line frame set that I got, it might even be able to fit up to 35C tires without brakes. Your mileage may vary though, because with these entry level bikes, tire clearance tends to vary from frame set to frame set, but at least expect to fit a 28C tire. The frame set geometry also feels mostly neutral. Not too aggressive, it's not too laid back, but it's just comfortably in the middle. The stock saddle also seems a bit wider than the racing type saddles that come on most other bikes. And because of that, I've found this saddle pretty comfortable and unlike a lot of others, I don't think it really needs to be upgraded out of the box. Of course, every butt is different. Your mileage may vary. So the verdict with the ride quality, it's mostly neutral with a touch of springiness when climbing, sprinting, or putting power through the pedals. Now on to durability and reliability. Even though that I think that the wheels are a pretty good value, I found that they're not as durable as other wheels that I've tried. After about 100 miles, they're about two to three millimeters out of true. And with regular use, you'd probably have to get it professionally trued after about three to six months. But assuming that you do get them professionally true, they will be more durable after that process. A quirk that I've noticed is that the crank bolts tend to loosen after about every single ride. Normally, I just use grease on my crank bolts, but with these, I think it's essential to use Loctite to keep them in place. But that's an easy fix. And now there's the elephant in the room, which is State's attention to detail. I'm not trying to bash State at all, but in all honesty, State has been by far the company that have had the most problems with their bikes. There's been bubbles and inconsistencies in the paints and in the rear triangle and on the inside of the fork legs, the paint is blue where you can see that they didn't exactly get it to the intended color. The packaging was also the most lacking that I've experienced. I received some scratch components, including some pretty noticeable scratches on the non-drive side crank arms and components had this like adhesive gunk and grease smears on them, particularly on the rear wheel and on the stem. And it felt like I was getting used goods, which is just unacceptable. What was particularly unacceptable though is that the first frame set that I got had a pretty sizable dent in the down tube. And that first frame set also had 115 millimeter rear spacing. That's five millimeters off of acceptable. State's been responsive and they did everything to set things right. But the thing is, that frame set should have never left the factory in the first place. And although they were able to get me all the components that I needed in a timely fashion, that's wasted time for me because I had to rebuild up an entire bike. And if you're a beginner that has to deal with that, you're probably going to have to take it to a shop and spend even more money. And apparently I'm not alone in my experience. A lot of you in the comments have had similar experiences with State where there are problems, but they are responsible to fix them. It's just a little bit unfortunate that they even have to fix them in the first place. So is the State 4130 core line worth it? First, let's take a look at the competition. Here in the United States, of course, there is the king of entry-level bikes, the Kilo TT Pro. And across the board, the Kilo TT Pro has better components, which theoretically should make for a better bike. But the 4130 core line does offer some important things that may be worth it over the Kilo TT Pro. And that comes in the form of options. State really nails down the aesthetic of their bikes. They look really awesome. I got this one in nightshade purple and it really does pop. There's also a whole host of other paint jobs that you can choose from. State also gives you the option to choose your preferred handlebar type, whether that's risers, drops, or bullhorns, which is something that the competition doesn't offer. And handlebars are one of the most important components to get right if you want to enjoy riding and being comfortable on your bike. And although the pedal options are a bit lacking, Backing, that option is still there and they're likely to add more and better options for pedal upgrades in the future. As with the competition, Kilo TT Pro or otherwise, you're most likely going to be stuck with whatever spec that they offer. And State's customer service seems to be pretty good. It kind of sucks though that I would recommend that you actually expect to use their customer service if you do order directly from them. But because I've had so many issues with both of the bikes that they sent me, I would recommend that if you want a State that you just don't order from them, even though they offer free returns and free exchanges, which is pretty 
insane. But all those problems and all that headache, just get it from a bike shop if you want one and have the bike shop deal with it so you can actually get what you pay for. The 4130 core line is good for the price. It's just that the Kilo TT Pro is amazing for the price. But if you're not in the United States and you can't get one, then the Stay 4130 core line is looking like your next best option, assuming you get it from a shop and let them deal with state. And Fixie famous shout outs to Michael Rector, David Pierce, Joey Rapallo, Ozzy Verto, Merrick Dervecki, Robert Terpstra, Blue Tick Hound, and Jazeel for making these Fix Gear videos possible through the support on Patreon. And if you hadn't ridden your bike yet today, stop watching me right now. Shut down your device because life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.